Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making this video to show you my new MIG welder behind me. Some of you saw it in a previous video and wanted me to show it to you guys. So here it is. It's the Power MIG 180C from Lincoln Electric. And I actually bought this from a Lincoln Electric dealer. I went to them because first I was going to buy the 140 which just plugs into a 120 wall outlet like this. But after I talked to them and told them what I needed it for, they recommended I buy this one. And this welder here has the 220 plug. It's the same plug as on your AC225 Lincoln Electric stick welder. So I didn't have to modify any electrical things in my garage. I could just keep using the plug I was already using for my other welder. And this one here comes with the three year warranty. Now this welder here is not the one you buy at a retail store like Home Depot or Canadian Tire. This is more the industrial grade type welder. Now with this welder here, when you open up the side panel, you're going to see an aluminum cast wire feeder. On the retail stores one, it's going to be plastic. When you buy these welders, they give you a small spool of solid wire and also a small spool of flux core wire. This wire here I use when I don't use the gas and this wire here I use when I'm welding with gas and welding much thinner stuff. There's also a chart here when you open up the door. This is just to give you a guideline when you're welding. So for example, if you were welding 16 gauge metal and if you weren't using the gas, these would be the settings. If you were using the gas, which is the argon, 75% argon and 25% CO2, then these would be the settings over here. And there's quite a significant difference if you're using the gas or not. And if we come to the front here, are the adjustment knobs. And these here are variable, they do not click in each number. So you can tweak it exactly to what you want. One thing I'd like to know if anybody's watching and they know about this is what do these letters translate into volts? Because I've seen machines where it's numbers here, not letters. So if you do know, please comment under this video. And apparently the 180C has a diamond core. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but the guy at the dealer told me that it's a bit better built. And this is the cable for your gun, which is right over here. And this is what it's like. And here's the grounding cable for the welder. And by the way, this is the on off switch over here. And if we go in the back of the welder, you can see where the gas line hooks up right here. And here's some information on the back of it. And one other thing too, when you buy the 180C, you do get all the parts included for switching over to the flux core welding. Actually, when you get the welder, it's already got the flux core wire set up on it. I took it off and set up the solid wire welding. Now, I'm sure you guys are wondering how much did I pay for it. Well, I'm going to show you the little flyer here. And Lincoln has a promotion going on. It's called Money Matters. And this is the welder I bought over here, 737. It wasn't much more money than if I bought it at a retail store like Home Depot. So I went for the 180C instead of just the 180. And if I paid $812, which is the additional $75 on top of the 737, you received a free helmet. So it's about $190 value. So I opted to pay the 812 and to receive the new helmet because I had to buy a new one anyways. I already had a welding helmet, but it wasn't an auto darkening one. And I figured with the MIG welding, it's much easier if you can see what you're doing. And I just got the helmet yesterday after four weeks, which was pretty quick. Actually, it could take four to eight weeks to get it if you do go for that option. But I think it's well worth it because you have all the settings on your hat. It's very comfortable and it's auto darkening so you can see what you're doing before you actually start welding. And this carry-on bag came with it and a bandana. You can wrap this around your head so the sparks don't go on your hair. And there were also extra lenses for the welding helmet that came in that package. So what I'm going to do now is start it up and weld a few beads. I'm not a professional welder by any means, but I'm sure you guys want to see me fire it up in this video. And in some future videos, I'm more than likely going to be making a lot more videos of me making things while using the MIG welder. And I've just hooked up the gas to it. By the way, I did buy the fuel tank. It's much easier to weld thin metal, especially when you're doing a lot of small engine repairs. Okay, so I've got the gas on. What I'll do is run a quick bead on top here and this metal here is approximately 16 gauge and I've got this set at 3 for the wire feed and E for the heat. That's pretty well what's recommended here if you're using the gas. And 
And there's the first bead. I'm not sure if that was a bit too hot or not. I did get a few lessons from uh, Brendan at Get Bent Metal. That's his channel on YouTube. Good guy. Anyways, I'm still learning. I'm going to try another bead over here and turn down the heat just a little bit. Anyways, I'm pretty happy with the results. I still have a lot to learn, but it's going to get me out of a jam for sure. I've even did some snowblower repairs this winter on really thin metal, and it saves you a lot of time if you have it right in your shop, and then you can get your welder to pay back itself. If you do welding repairs in your shop, make sure you charge the customers appropriately because you're using your welder and your gas. Like this tank here costs about $70, to be refilled. It's a mix of argon and CO2. But definitely if you're a small engine mechanic I do recommend that you have some kind of MIG welder in your shop. And this welder comes with a parts list so if you need a part it's easy to get from Lincoln Electric. Also with the welder I got this plastic adapter here that's for when you're done the one pound spool. You stick that in there and you can put a 10 pound or whatever size you want to get and it fits on there perfectly. So don't throw this away when you get your new welder. So what I got to say is if you get one, you're not going to be disappointed. And I do recommend that you get the gas tank with it if you plan on welding some thin stuff. And when it comes to the flux core wire, apparently this will perform better for thicker metal and also if the metal is dirty or rusty. If you're using a solid wire with the gas, make sure that everything you weld has been cleaned thoroughly. It's really important that your metal is clean before you weld. And again, a thanks goes out to Brendan from Get Bent Metal for his tips and tricks that he shared with me. You can also check out his channel. I'll put the link to it underneath this video. If you have any questions, you can contact him. And you don't have to be a professional welder to be able to weld enough to get by in your small engine shop. And I do recommend that you pay a professional welder for some lessons or go take a course yourself so that you can become better at it. It's always good to learn some tips and tricks from the professionals. There are a few good YouTube channels on YouTube that do show some good tips and tricks for welding. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you in my next videos.